Hello, my name is Richard Gautier. I live in um, Utah in the United States. And this presentation is on the subject of microvita are evolutionary cosmic intelligence agents. Microvita, the concept was first introduced in 1986 by Prabhat Ranjan Sarkar. And a very short uh, summary, he proposed that they are subtle subatomic living entities that uh, move everywhere in the universe, creating life and minds, that they are emanated from a cosmic mind and are involved in different uh, levels of what he calls the cosmic cycle of creation. So I'm going to share my screen. And, and begin, okay. So before I, my, oh, Microvita were introduced in 1986, but the cosmic cycle of creation itself, the description of the cycle of creation from pure consciousness to matter, to mind and back to pure consciousness, that was introduced in uh, 1955. Um, by Prabhat Ranjan Sarkar. And uh, then microvita were introduced you know, some years later. So, and microvita have different roles to play in the cosmic cycle of creation. So just in a, in a very short introduction to the cosmic cycle itself, because then you can see where microvita can fit in at different stages. So the, the cosmic cycle of creation starts with a pure, a non-qualified infinite consciousness. You could say that always exists, but it has the capacity to give itself qualities by its, its uh, creative power. And when it gives itself qualities, it creates a cosmic mind. And the cosmic mind creates uh, the physical universe within itself. So this, uh, these are the different stages you can say of, of uh, stages of, of matter in the physical universe. There's um, etheric factor, aerial factor, luminous factor, liquid factor, and solid factor as the, as the universe evolves and down to a stage of maximum solidification. And at that point, um, consciousness has, has, has many qualities attached to it. And at that stage, uh, life uh, begins in the universe as it begins to be reorganized. The matter, uh, which is actually consci consciousness uh, qualified by the creative power, um, the qualities change and life uh, is introduced and the first um, um, cells are produced. And they have a, each cell has a small unit mind associated with it, an evolutionary process uh, now uh, goes from the simplest protozoa through the different animals, plants, stages. And so here the cosmic cycle of creation is moving along up to human beings with their first undeveloped minds and then more developed minds. And as people become, uh, their minds are fully reflecting of cosmic consciousness, they can realize who they are and what is their uh, goal of life spiritually to become back, back one with the uh, pure consciousness, which is the at the origin of the cosmic cycle of creation. So from pure consciousness to matter in a if, in a continuous process, and then from matter starting to mind you know, life and mind evolving back to pure consciousness. That's the cosmic cycle of creation. And that this was given before the concept of microvita was introduced. Um, let me change. So microvita, uh, which means little life, literally, they play uh, many different roles in this cosmic cycle of creation, bringing intelligence that is given to them by the cosmic mind. And now remember, it's a cosmic mind evolved from pure consciousness. The cosmic mind emanates 
um, microvita, and those microvita play different roles in the cycle of creation. So I'm just going to uh, read a, my comment, and then we'll talk. We'll see what the different roles that microvita play. So my comment is: microvita play different roles at different stages of the cosmic cycle of creation. The cosmic mind emanates microvita to do the work of the cosmic mind through the intelligent evolution of matter and the creation and evolution of lives and minds in the universe. So this presentation will give different quotes by P.R. Sarkar, that's Prabhat Ranjan Sarkar, the propounder of the microvita hypothesis, where microvita are active in different phases of the cosmic cycle of creation from the creation of microvita themselves, from cosmic ideas to, to helping human beings, the highest evolved beings in the universe, to and help them further develop and finally merge with cosmic consciousness. Much research is needed to develop our understanding of the scientific theory and applications of microvita by expanding human conceptual capacities through physico psycho spiritual practices and scientific research on microvita. So to, to understand microvita better, first of all, we have to develop our own minds and our conceptual uh, capacities to understand subtle uh, qualities of microvita and then engage in actual uh, scientific research as well. And that can be done within our minds internally and in laboratories externally to understand all the secrets of microvita. So as you're listening to these quotes of Prabhat Ranjan Sarkar, um, think if you are potentially a microvita researcher yourself and can participate in this um, project to develop a theory of microvita and in fact, bring a um, microvita society in the future where microvita and their, all their different applications will be understood uh, in ways that will benefit uh, human beings in many different ways. Okay, so what are microvita? So these are all, you'll see the quotation marks. These are all quotations from P.R. Sarkar uh, in relationship to aspects of microvita. There are entities who come within the realm of both physicality and psychic expression, which are smaller or subtler than atoms or electrons or protons. And in the psychic realm, they may be subtler than ectoplasms, which are objective mind substance. For such objects or for such entities, I use the term microvitum. These microvitum or in plural microvita may be, are not of protoplasmic order, and as such, they have got little to do with carbon molecules or carbon atoms, which are treated as the initial point or initial state of life in this universe. There, so far as physicality is concerned, these microvita are, their position is just between ectoplasm and electron, that is, mind and matter. But they are neither electo, ectoplasm, excuse me, ectoplasm nor electron. There are three categories of microvita. And so here's quotation. So these microvita may be broadly divided into three categories. First, those coming within the scope of a microscope. Secondly, those not coming within the scope of a microscope, but coming within the scope of perception as a result of their expression, as a result of their actional vibration. And thirdly, those not coming within the scope of common perception, but coming within the scope of a special type of perception, which is actually the reflection of conception within the periphery of perception. Such perception, that special type of perception, may be felt or realized by persons having highly developed minds, having spiritually oriented minds. So microvita are involved even in the initial stage of creation of matter. What is the silver line between the quinquelemental, that is made of five physical elements, the quinquelemental universe, 
an idea that is between the initial state of matter and microvita. Of that silver line, the outside is matter and the other side, the inner side is idea. That is, this silver line is made of the initial stage of matter and the cruder stage of idea. If you consider that the atom is the constituent of matter, likewise, idea is the constituent of microvita. So microvita are the initial stage of matter. Microvita are the silver line between idea and matter, though they are closer to the realm of ideas than matter. Microvita are the minutest entities and form atoms. So microvitum is the minutest entity. The collection of microvita forms a carbon atom. As a microvitum is the minutest entity, it cannot have a structure like that of an atom or a solar system. As microvitum is a singular entity, it has no structure. By nature, it is more energy than matter, so it travels and moves through inferences, like sound, touch, forms, taste, and smell, where other entities cannot move through inferences. It is true that every protoplasmic structure is based on carbon atoms. A single microvitum is insufficient to form one carbon atom, but when billions of microvita get solidified, a carbon atom is formed, generally or naturally of heterogeneous nature and under special circumstances of homogeneous nature. Billions of microvita produce a single carbon atom. That is why it cannot be said that everything comes from carbon atoms. Rather, the carbon atoms come from microvita. Not only carbon atoms, but all other kinds of atoms are the creation of microvita. Naturally, chemistry, biochemistry, and all other associated branches of science will undergo a revolutionary change. Microvita collectively create minds. So many microcosms, so many microvita are there. They have not got clear eye feeling. Their existence is more of a physical nature than of psychic nature. The collective body of microvita is another name of carbon atom. Carbon atom is another name of so many microvita with so many specialities, with so many characteristics. The collective body of microvita is the collective eye feeling maintaining a relationship with the physical body. There is no such relationship in the case of a dead physical structure. The collective body of microvita is carbon atom, and when carbon atoms are in cohesion with other carbonic atoms, eye feeling is created. As coverage of these collective bodies, there is endoplasm. And that's a, here endoplasm is defined is the portion of the collective body of atoms, which are composed of microvita, in cohesion that gives rise to the eye feeling of the mind. Microvita carry genetic DNA or RNA and form viruses. DNA and RNA are the uh, genetic um, uh, information in cells that, that allow the cells to construct the their form. When solid matter explodes at the atomic level, billions of microvita that have solidified to form the atom may awaken. Microvita are dormant in the atom and very small. When jadis phota, the explosion of matter, occurs, microvita awaken and take on a different structure. If the environment is changed, microvita change to suit the environment. That is how a tiny microvitum can change and become so large that it can be seen through a microscope. Microvita, when awakened, develop a personality that depends upon the environment. If jadis phota, this explosion, takes place in a solution of Fe2O3, you'll get one structure. The structure will be different in different environments. If it is in another structure, such as Fe3O4, it will be different. As the environment will affect the structure of microvita, that structure will keep changing as microvita move through different environments. 
when microvitamin has been awakened and enters a cell, a virus adapts to the environment of the cell. You get a virus when a microvitum has entered a cell and developed. The RNA and DNA of a particular virus is unique to that virus. Particles of cosmic chita, which is the objective cosmic mind, when microvita are emanated from cosmic mind, those particles already contain the information for RNA or DNA. This information is there, but not seen until microvitum is awakened. And when it is in virus form, then we can detect it. Microvita create carbon atoms, subatomic particles, and unicellular and multicellular life. So here's a, a quote um, that relates to that. The pervasive stinking smell which results from the decomposition and disintegration of rotten animal and plant bodies attracts negative microvita. These negative microvita <clears throat> uh, uh, cause the creation of newer carbon atoms and other subatomic particles. These particles then create unicellular life and sometimes somewhere multicellular heterogeneous life also. The origin, existence, and disappearance of these entities are rooted in negative microvita. Microvita transforms species, transform sex, and also affect glands and mental propensities. Microvita may affect the glands and subglands, or the nuclei of the nerve cells, and even the transformation of species and the transformation of sex may occur. Microvita may directly affect the plexi, and through the plexi, the mental propensities or vrittis are affected. Vrittis or propensities are of three types, prophysical propensities, psychic propensities, and pro-spiritual propensities. All these three types of vrittis are affected. The internal protoplasmic formula will change. Nuclei can also be affected by microvita, and protoplasm will be affected by bringing changes in the nucleus with the help of microvita. The displacement of the nucleus can be brought about with the help of microvita, which will bring qualitative changes in the internal structure. Internally, the hormones will be affected, and thus externally, the corporal structure will also be affected. Self-controlling faculties and the evolution of species. In each and every physical and psychic structure, there remain self-controlling faculties. And in the case of collective structures, regarding these psychophysical longings, if it is seen that the collective body of a particular nature of living beings or expressions do not like it, then the controlling faculty creates a sort of change and metamorphosis in the physical structure. And as a result, the nature of longings also changes. In the case of individuals, the efforts of the self-controlling faculties to advance are limited by the vital principles of the physical structure. Attempts to surpass these limits result in the decomposition of the physical structure. But in the case of, of the collective body or the collective structure, there may be a change and that change may not go against the characteristics of the physical structure if there remains a constant endeavor for such a change, rather for such a metamorphosis. And in a collective body, the collective controlling faculty may create a sort of change in the physical structures if such a change is supported by macrocosmic conation, otherwise not. So this is a, a, a short statement of, of how the evolution of species can occur. The evolution of a species depends on the efforts of the species to change. These changes must be approved by the cosmic mind. So this is a very different approach than um, the Darwinian theory of evolution. Microvita can 
cause physical and mental illnesses and also help to cure them. People are under the impression that something called a virus is the minutest living being. But virus is a vague term. There is in fact nothing like a virus. Thus the question of it being a living being does not arise. In another context, I said that various kinds of negative microvita, which have up to now been called a virus, damage human beings. Different diseases take the help of different kinds of tanmatras, that is uh, sensory uh, vibrations, from country to country, from planet to planet, and from the far distant frontiers of the universe, these negative microvita carry the seeds of destructive diseases. These varieties of negative microvita also spread mean-mindedness and negative psychic complexes. Similarly, from various planets and distant nebulae, varieties of positive microvita bring pious sentient thoughts and elevating sentiments. Changes in agriculture and commerce by understanding microvita. So in the future, these changes may happen. Intensive research in microvita will surely bring about radical changes in the realm of commercial transactions. Suppose a certain country is making a huge profit by selling sodium nitrite. Now, if the denomination and the number of the microvita present in the oxygen of the sodium nitrite is decreased or increased, in the sodium nitrate factory of another country, then the buyers may not like to buy sodium nitrite supplied by the former country. Naturally, there will be a change in the pattern of international commercial transactions as a result of the production of commodities with the increase or decrease in the number of microvita. Again, take the case of jute. The quality of jute in different districts of Bengal varies although the jute seeds are the same everywhere. In Bengal, all are aware of the fact that there is a clear difference in the quality of jute in the districts of Mai Mansinga, Jalpaiguri, and Murshidabad. The cause is the same in this case also, the varying number of microvita. Take another case, the case of potato. Even after the use of the same chemical fertilizer, the rate of production and taste of potatoes in all cases are not uniform. Perhaps many persons are not aware of the cause of the difference in the rate of production and taste of potatoes from one place to another. The cause lies in the number and denomination of microvita. The difference in the number of microvita in oxygen accounts for this difference. Major changes in pharmotechnology, biotechnology, and pyrotechnology with microvita. There will be revolutionary changes in the fields of pharmachemistry and biotechnology. A particular object has its particular medicinal value. Take, for instance, the case of copper sulfate. It contains copper, sulfur, and oxygen. Any variation in atomic proportions brings changes in the quality and effectiveness of medicines. Changes in the number of microvita bring qualitative change. Intensive pharmacochemistry research will reveal the amount of microvita required to produce particular kinds of medical effects. And accordingly, a scientist will be able to evolve accurate and effective formula for various medicines. Naturally, the old and outdated formula will be discarded. Hence, pharmacochemistry is sure to be effective. It is often found that the same medicine produced by different companies has varying effectiveness. The medicine produced by one company is found to be more effective than one produced by another company. Here also, variations in the number and classification of microvita account for such differences. Similarly, microvita theory will also influence pyrotechnology. It is noticeable that firecrackers manufactured by one company produce more or less sound than those of other, another company. The greater the internal movement, the higher the frequency, and as a result, the explosive potential is intensified, producing greater sound. The mobility of microvita 
influences the internal movement. Consequently, there will be great changes in the control and production of highly powerful bombs. As this is concerned with speed, the very nature and mode of the speed of rockets will be affected. Human beings will evolve more quickly in the microvita age. According to the modern biologist, protoplasmic cells are made of carbon atoms and other, but in the microvita age, the biologist will say that the protoplasmic cells are not made of carbon atoms, rather they are the collective solidified form of innumerable microvita. By controlling the microvita in the protoplasmic cells, big changes can be effected within the human body. Ordinary people can be made extraordinary. Their mental qualities and capabilities can be enlarged by supplying microvita in sufficient quantity. That is to say, the theory of microvita has immense potentialities in introducing numerous changes in human society. By changing microvita, ectoplasmic changes will come, which in turn will bring about endoplasmic change, and thus the mind will be able to control the organism, the physical body, in a better way. Consequently, there will be remarkable changes in the overall personalities of human beings. These changes will take place in the internal sphere as much as in the external structure. The personalities of human beings will not be the same as they are now. Due to changes in the nerve cells, a change in ectoplasmic cells also occurs, and as a result, the effulgence of the body changes. In the age of microvita, the appearance of the physical body will change. Human beings will become more psychic than physical, and in the next phase, they will become more spiritual than psychic. Microvita helped human civilization develop. And here's my comment. Microvita helped human civilization develop by bringing civilization changing new ideas. This was hinted, while not directly stated, by P.R. Sarkar in the following quote. What does archaeological history say? Has there been any collective influence of positive or negative microvita on this earth or in the entire cosmos? And what is your guess regarding Atlantis, Oceana? and Gondwana land. Answer, human beings came here 1 million years ago, but the history of civilization starts from the time of the Rig Veda 15,000 years ago. From 1 million years ago to 15,000 years ago, for so many years, 985,000 years between the Miocene and the Oligocene ages, was human society in a dormant state? Humans invented pictorial letters less than 7,000 years ago. A full-fledged civilization with the four symbols of advancement, agriculture, the wheel, dress, and script started 7,000 years ago. Is there any role of microvita, positive or negative? It's another question. Positive microvita emanated by hand gestures of a spiritual master. If a deaf person sincerely wants to hear what the Sadhguru, the spiritual master, is saying, the positive microvita radiated from these two mudras of the Sadhguru's special Varabhaya mudra are sure to help. They will certainly help that person. Suppose the Sadhguru is saying something and a deaf or dumb man wants to hear it, but cannot. If he concentrates the mind on Varabhaya Mudra, the two special hand positions called Varabhaya Mudra of the guru after the uh, a, a spiritual discourse, Dharma Mahat Chakra, there will be the direct effect of positive, positive microvita on the auricular or other nerve cells and also on the controlling cells. And it may be that all of a sudden, he may get back the power of hearing. One should look towards these two mudras, the hand gestures, and not to anything else. Microvita are radiated through these two mudras. This is the inner secret. 
microvita express divine grace. You know that divine grace does not depend on any logic. It depends only on the whims of Parma Purusha, Supreme Consciousness or God. If Parma Purusha is satisfied with your intuitional practice, with your sincere zeal, then he may bless you so that you can easily reach that supreme stance. But if he does not bless you, then you may attain the goal in theory, but not in practice. Thus, everyone will have to seek his blessing in order to reach the goal. We say that spiritual progress is affected by the application of positive microvita, but in fact, even microvitum is nothing but the grace of Parma Purusha, or God. Let human beings perform virtuous deeds, practice meditation, serve the suffering humanity, and in return, they will attain his grace. Finally, extensive research on microvita is needed. And I hope people will think how they can participate. Now there should be extensive research work regarding this microvitum or these microvita. Our task is gigantic, and we are to start our research work regarding these microvita immediately without any further delay. Otherwise, many problems in modern society will not be solved in a nice way. As prama, equilibrium and equipoise is an essentiality in the field of intellectuality or intellectual pursuit, similarly, in the higher intellectual realm, research work on these microvita is extremely necessary. So I'd like to thank you very much. I'd be happy to hear from individuals with questions. This is my email, richgotier at gmail.com. This, the article from which this PowerPoint was prepared is available to download at my academia website, richardgotier at .academia.edu slash research. And PR Sarkar's collection of articles and discourses on microvita called Microvitam in a Nutshell. Here is where it's available. Um, and I encourage everyone, if you want to learn more about microvita and what PR Sarkar said about them between 1986 and 1990, please take a look at his uh, collection of. Uh, articles. And thank you very much. And I welcome your uh, questions and comments. Namaskar. I have one question. Uh, could you please go into the genesis of microvita? Well, mostly what PR Sarkar says is that they are emanated from the cosmic mind. Now, the detail of, of that is he, he mentioned that the cosmic mind itself, the cosmic chitta, which is the objective portion of the cosmic mind, is emanating it, its own sort of individual uh, particles of chitta called chitanu, and those develop apparently into microvita. And, and so a, the, these chitanu, atoms of chitta within the cosmic mind, um, the objective portion of the cosmic mind, they, are, they themselves are carrying uh, mental qualities or, or ideas, or even you can say concepts and ideas and, the, and uh, codes of, of chemistry for DNA and RNA that can create life. So, so the cosmic mind has, has you can say, pre-calculated the um, formula for um, genetic DNA and RNA, and then inserted those codes into the cosmic, into the microvita that are emanated or transformed from those cosmic chitta. That is my best understanding of the origin of, of microvita from the cosmic mind, that the chitta itself is transformed into microvita. And those microvita, which are still existing within the cosmic mind, uh, go on to, to form the universe, probably in, in the Big Bang. And, and those, those microvita would be present even oh, at, the, at the Big Bang itself. Microvita and energy are the two components of 
the the universe that to, that form the universe and then also are with the universe through the entire uh, cycle of the cosmic cycle of creation. I, I hope that's helpful. That's that's the best that I can do so far from his uh, quotations. Thank you. Uh, a follow up question. Uh, does that imply that the number of microvita is a finite number? Or do they get created and destroyed through some, some process? Well, I, it's hard to say. I, I would say because he, he says the universe, the physical unit itself is, is finite in size, existing within the cosmic uh, chitta, the objective portion of the cosmic mind. So I, I would think, but it's a guess that the, the number of microvita is finite also, but, but huge. And there are also positive and negative microvita both existing in the universe. The negative microvita tend to affect uh, the, the, the organization and creation of, of matter. And the positive microvita are more associated with the organization and creation of mind. But negative microvita can also act on the physical body to, to crudify and create illness in the body. Positive microvita can make the mind more positive and, and make the mind and, and body more healthy. And there's a balance between the positive and negative microvita in the universe. And when, when uh, certain medicines act, positive microvita are said to actually eat the negative microvita. So, uh, so microvita can disappear or be absorbed into other microvita uh, in these different life processes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, would it be correct to say that microvita are organic um, forms of life? And uh, in that sense, is there any differentiation between uh, organic microvita and synthetic microvita, for example, as the, as the ones which are created by the AI, like paras parasitic uh, microvita? Oh, okay. Well, I would say because all microvita have a living quality to them, they, they're all organic in that sense. Uh, they're more um, primordial than, than uh, physical, and sort of living entities, protozoa, because protozoa are formed of chemical atoms and chemical atoms are formed of microvita. So, and it's basically the negative microvita that do the formation of, of matter um, and positive microvita become involved in the evolution of, of mind. Now remember, mind and matter are both uh, supreme consciousness that's been qualified by the creative power of the supreme consciousness to take the form of matter and mind. So as the qualities applied to supreme consciousness change, um, then mind emerges from matter. And microvita are somehow at the, uh, the Baba Pierre Sarkar says that the silver line between matter and mind. So microvita have, have, have both some mental and physical qualities as well, individual microvita. Now, artificial intelligence um, is, is, a, is a computer program, but so computer programs are, are codes of, of, of information. Now, depending on, I'd say the effect of, of the computer codes, if people's minds become more subtle, it's because that they're, that's happening due to the effect of positive microvita, but if the effect of, of artificial intelligence crudifies people mind, people's minds, then we can say the effect is due to negative microvita. Negative microvita are attracted and positive microvita are attracted to uh, minds that, that have either, you can say positive and negative qualities. And, and those qualities of mind attract corresponding qualities of microvita to, to enhance either the positive or the negative qualities of mind. Um, so, so artificial intelligence may have beneficial effects, but if they are used to control human beings and degrade human beings and, and block the development of 
human minds and consciousness, that would definitely be a, a negative effect. And you could say an effect due to negative microvita. Human beings have the natural uh, capacity to expand their minds basically infinitely and to become one with the supreme consciousness. Any technology that helps that process would be a positive result. I, I, I was just speculating here, but what I'm saying is that if microvita are organic in nature, uh, it can easily be, let's say, uh, we can imagine that they can also be manufactured as synthetic microvita, just like you have organic potatoes, we also have genetically modified potatoes, which are not like organic potatoes, right? So in the same way as we create uh, synthetic products or synthetic things, uh, the microvita could be manufactured in the same way as synthetic microvita. Well, uh, has there been any research or any mention on this anywhere that you are aware, aware of? What I'm aware of is that that Pierre Sarkar said that microvita cannot be created by human beings. They, they are emanated by the cosmic mind and, and utilized by the cosmic mind. Now, people can learn how to control and utilize- But I'm not talking about human beings here. Well, <laughs> you said, are they organic? They're all living. And so, yes. and they, they create living beings. So, when you say organic, what what do you mean living, or do you mean something? Because no, I mean, microvita are not created artificially. Human beings, or no one except the cosmic mind, according to P.R. Sarkar, can can uh, create or emanate microvita. So, in that mm -hmm. sense, human beings cannot create them, but they can learn their qualities. They can learn their properties. They can learn how to utilize both positive and negative microvita. Negative microvita can be utilized for a positive purpose if, if human beings learn how to do that. Okay, so, uh, so that help? yeah, uh, would it be correct to say that there's no, there's no data or research on potential existence of synthetic uh, artificial microvita, right? I don't know of any research on that. I have developed or started, you know, proposing research on how to identify the effect of positive microvita in a biological in a biological experiment. Because if 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 microvita create atoms, and if microvita are released from radioactive atoms, which P.R. Sarkar you know, seems to indicate that they are, those those microvita that are released from radioactive atoms in, a, in the chemical environment that's uh, proper will develop into viruses. And so viruses developing from you know, radioactive atoms, those, those viruses can, because they carry DNA or RNA from the cosmic mind and the, virus, and the viruses, they can organize phys crude you know, physical matter to, into, into living cells. That's my prediction that you'll be you'll get protozoic cells develop near radioactive atoms in a, in a carefully controlled scientific experiment. And, and if, if those uh, living cells appeared in a test tube from pure chemicals in the presence of radioactivity, that would indirectly indicate that the genetic information from those living cells came from the radioactive atoms. And how does genetic information get into radioactive atoms? You have to, it would have to be when there since the, the atoms were, were created either in exploding stars or at the beginning of the universe. It means right from the beginning of the Big Bang, uh, microvita and their genetic information that they carry is built in to the the Big Bang itself that created the universe. But this is all natural microvita. And no one has uh, thought, as far as I know, how to create um, artificial microvita. Um, but it's a good question. I, I, Pierre Sarkar said that, like I said, 
only the cosmic mind can emanate uh, microvita. But maybe, maybe some indirect means could be found to create artificial microvita. Consider that a, a subject for further research. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. So please let's uh, let's leave the question for the end. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, please. No, I I've completed my presentation. Okay. And, and so now. So it was the end. That's why I, I went to ask went on asking the question. Yeah, I appreciate your questions. Thanks. I actually have another question, but I just don't want to hijack the the channel. It's no problem for me. I, you're you're first in line. Uh, what is the interface that the microvita is using in communicating, let's say, with the human biology or with whatever kind of? I mean, what what is the interface? Well, the interface, I, I think, is the, the uh, first of all, the, the DNA, the uh, deoxyribonucleic acid and the ribonucleic acid of cells, and which they control the hormone production, and the microvita would change the rate of hormone production and therefore affect the, not only the, the um, propensities, the psychological propensities, but also the biological structure. They could, you know, create evolutionary changes in the physical structure according to the collective desires of a group of living beings. That includes animals and plants as well as human beings. So they're, they're inter interfacing at the level of the, the, the physical body, the, the chemistry, and also the subtler microvita directly move in the mind. So the, the, the first microvita move in the, through sensory in, inferences in the physical world, and the, the two subtler kinds of microvita move actually through the, the waves of the mind and can influence the mind and to make the mind more positive, more negative, it, it, it influencing the different propensities that are expressed and experienced in the mind. So, it, so I would say microvita interface both with the, the physical body and, and the mind to produce their effects. So would it be correct to say that uh, if it operates through the DNA, that uh, it, the interface would be the production and inhibition of specific types of proteins, right? Yes, the DNA itself uh, regulates the amount of proteins that are produced in different cells, for example. The same DNA does different things in different cells. And um, if, if the, if the Microvita had created the, the DNA and RNA by organizing the, the chemicals of the, the DNA to create, create the DNA, because microvita are not DNA. Microvita are subtler than matter, okay? But they, they have the organizing capacity to, to organize the creation of DNA molecules. And they also have, the mind, mind expresses when, when atoms are organized. So mind actually it starts to emerge from matter as the matter becomes organized because the matter is itself composed of microvita and organized matter expresses the collective action of microvita, which becomes uh, the first indication of mind. Um, so, uh, the microvita are there everywhere, <laughs> mind and the body. and Microvita and energy, you can say, are the two ingredients of our physical universe, and, and which is existing in the cosmic mind, and it's evolving in the cosmic mind. But microvita are, are basically doing, this is how I summarize it, microvita are doing the work of the cosmic mind to move the cosmic cycle of creation along, starting from the creation of matter, the evolution of matter, evolution of mind, evolution of living beings, human beings, inspiring human beings and to, to move back to the supreme consciousness. So throughout the cosmic cycle of creation, microvita are actively doing the work of the, the desires of the cosmic mind, which are to ultimately to create human beings and to liberate human beings. It's, so there's a, 
microvita have a spiritual function, but in order to have the spiritual function, they first have to do their physical functions of creating the universe and evolving the universe. I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with Bruce Lipton's bi uh, biology of belief. I, I've heard of it, but I haven't read his book. He, he, he says that genetic expression is controlled by what he calls the signal, which, he, which, would, be, which would be in plain English translated as vibe. And so would it be, would it be correct to, to presume that it's this signal that the microvita is this signal and it's the microvita which controls and uh, genetic expression of certain genes inhibiting certain genes and uh, opening up another gene. So would it be correct to say yeah. that that signal, the, the thing that Bruce Lipton refers to as the signal? Well, I, that, like that I said, could be, I, that could fit, that microvita could fit in there, actually. Well, well the DNA and RNA create the, the proteins and utilize the proteins that uh, give the different signals to, to cells, which function, which cells to uh, be more active and more inactive. So at one level, the, 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 the biochemistry is giving the signals because all of that information to, to, to do that signaling is built into the DNA itself. So I don't, so I don't think that this, the concept of signal is the same as the concept of microvita. I, as far as I know, Bruce Lipton doesn't know about microvita. And, and signal is, is a kind of a general word. It can, you can have a signal from physical things, or you could have a signal from something that's more subtle. Actually, so I he, think, actually hmm. he refers to the signal as something which is beyond the biochemistry and as something which which we call which he calls vibration that's why he calls it the the vibe but okay but literally that would be the mood which but vibration which, is also very general there's physical vibration and there's subtle vibration so again i think he may be on to something but uh, the, the microvita concept i think is more subtle than his concept he in his concept, uh, the signal is more would be closer to mood. What's your word? Moon? Mood? mood. M O O D. Well, mood is 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 a an em emotional feeling, and microvita control the the uh, expression of all the different propensities. They're described mm -hmm. as fifty main propensities in in yoga philosophy, and so. So microvita control all of their expression, but their expression can also be controlled by human beings utilizing the effects of microvita to, to help control their, all their propensities and express them in a positive way. So again, mood is, is you can say, is a feeling, in a, some feeling that every propensity has associated mood with it. It's a, it's a subjective feeling. But I, I, again, I think that, Microvita goes in a in a more detailed direction than either uh, mood or vibe or uh, signal. Those those are a little bit too general and don't give enough specific specificity to, for example, develop ex an experimental approach to test these ideas. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need now is really to to move to the actual move to the laboratory. Uh, to see if we can find experimental um, tests or that support the possible existence of microvita. Got it. Thank you. That's what I've been working on for the past, uh, you know, number of years. Thanks very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Well, um, I could ask a question, um, try to um, 
uh, forward what uh, Narada was trying to express yesterday to me about microvita and your work on microvita. Um, is it there any risk that uh, all the research done uh, on microvita could be misused? Uh, could um, this knowledge be, yeah, uh, how, how to protect it <laughs> if it's, it's a case from any bad uh, management uh, yeah. <laughs> intentions? Yeah. It, it's a good question. Any, any science can be misused unless it has, you know, moral people who are uh, using it and who are able to control people who would be abusive of it. So it's like, so just any science can be used in a positive or negative way. And so microvita, it's microvita themselves, you could say are positive and negative, but they have to be utilized, you know, by people who have a strong moral basis and spiritual basis. Um, otherwise, yes, they, they could be misused. I think just like any, any uh, scientific uh, fact possibly could be misused. The misuse is not by the microvita, it's by the human beings that are thinking for their own self-aggrandizement or power or desire to, you know, you know selfish interests. And, and so we need the kind of society that will minimize or prevent that kind of misuse or abuse of, of, of any knowledge, including microvita. I have a question. Like B.R. Sarkar speaks about seven types of microvita, no? And yeah, the also, subtle. Mm -hmm. And also he speaks about collective microvita of one type. Can you explain that? that the, yeah. Well, the, the seven types of, of microvita in the, in, in the subtle microvita are called uh, Deva Yonis. And, and these, um, they're also called luminous bodies and they're traditional in, in Indian culture, knowledge of them these subtle entities that you know, help human beings in different ways. And P.R. Sarkar describes them as being human beings that are you know, between lifetimes, who before they, they died, their mind was fixed on certain qualities, maybe attraction to music or to physical beauty or to developing good qualities, but their, their minds had not been directly directed towards attaining the Supreme Consciousness and they're reborn as luminous bodies and they, they help human beings in different ways or they're attracted or, or they carry information from subtle levels, maybe even of the cosmic mind to human beings. So they, they when, when scientific discoveries are made, maybe it's, they're being brought by uh, some of these luminous bodies. Um, now, as far as the collective activities of, of microvita, um, you know, I, I, I can't say too much. My interpretation of when he talked about the collective uh, effects was that he was talking about these a collection of different kinds of subtle microvita. So I think one microvitum could even be a luminous body. My, but this, this needs to be looked at. One microvitum uh, could, could uh, be the expression of one luminous body. But at the same time, the luminous body, just like the human body is made of uh, many other factors, each of those uh, other factors could have its own microvita associated with it. So I think there's a hierarchy of microvita, just like there's a hierarchy of, of, of um, minds, even within our human body, each, each of the cells in our body has its own cellular mind. Uh, each of our you can say our metazoa, our, our, our organic uh, structures in our body has its own metazoic mind and we have our human mind and the collection of all of those uh, minds together, you know, is, is, is also like a, a collective mind. Mm. So I think that may apply to microvita as well. There could be a hierarchy of, of microvita in a, a different uh, luminous body or in a, a physical and mental body as well. It, it needs more research. So I, I wish I could say something more detailed. That's the best I can say 
from my current understanding. Thank you. There are negative uh, subtle microvita also, they're called pretiones. Mm -hmm. So they, they tend to make, the, the, to try to pull people into depression or you know, if, if negative feelings. And, and, and so they, that, they need to be fought by the human mind to try to be as positive as possible and to attract as many positive microvita as possible to fight the effects on the mind of negative microvita. There is, is always a, the spirit of Tantra is that there is always a struggle between positivity and negativity in, in, in life. And the struggle is to, the negative, negativity needs to be overcome by positivity. And that struggle is what elevates life in the universe, even in, in the human mind, up to the level of merging in, in supreme consciousness, it's struggle all the way. Struggle is the essence of life, according to P.R. Sarkar. I, I see a question. We carve through mountains to find one God particle. What are the tools needed to identify and record microvita so we can gain the information? My sound does not work. So what's called the gar, God particle, that's just the, the, the joking name for the Higgs boson. It was, it was the, one of the physical theorists named Leon Letterman proposed the name God particle to the Higgs boson, which is just a, you can say it's a, an important physical particle, but it's not a God particle, no more than any other. You can say every particle is a God particle because it's composed of microvita, you know, created by the cosmic mind. But the, the question is mainly how do we identify and record microvita so that we can gain the information? We need to first somehow in a, in a um, some kind of scientific ex experiment, find a result that indicates that microvita even exist. Microvita today, scientifically, you could say are a scientific hypothesis that has not been uh, proved scientifically or supported by a well-controlled scientific experiment. And that's what needs to be done. This is one experiment I've proposed that I explained earlier, taking a radioactive material, which is if it's giving off microvita and if those microvita are creating viruses, then bring that uh, radioactive material near a test tube containing inert chemical ingredients. Look at those ingredients in a microscope and see if you see protozoa uh, emerging under your microscope that weren't there before. And if there's no leaking of, of bacteria into your test tube, uh, if you do a well-controlled experiment, then you, if, if protozoa appear in the, in the, uh, under the microscope, uh, you have to say, where did they come from? And where did their DNA come from? Because there's no natural, uh, there's no known natural method of creating DNA or RNA in a laboratory. And particularly the, the genetic code of DNA and RNA, no one, no origin of life researcher has any idea how DNA and RNA got its genetic code. It seems like it was designed by some very intelligent being. Um, they can't produce it in a laboratory, at least not yet. I mean, of course, you can take, if you start with DNA, you can make RNA, or you, if RNA, you can make DNA. But where the first RNA and DNA came from, nobody knows. And P.R. Sarkar is proposing that it's built into atoms themselves. And those atoms contain um, microvita carrying the codes of DNA and RNA, and that's all given by the cosmic mind. If that experiment comes out positive, then the question is, um, where did, how do you scientifically explain atoms containing DNA and RNA codes? If those atoms were created you know, billions of years ago before there was any life in the universe. So this is the kind of experiment I think that needs to be done to identify the possible action of microvita that cannot be explained by any known scientific laws.
there, there will probably be new laws discovered, the, the laws of microvita, but those have to be discovered by uh, experiment using an experimental approach that scientists cannot argue with. If you do the experiment properly, they, all they can say is, well, maybe the experiment wasn't done properly. But if you do the experiment properly, then that is evidence for microvita. Okay, so this kind of research hasn't been done yet, and it, it needs to be done. Okay, it says, yep, you are looking for Baba's mind emissions, if I am getting the vibe. <laughs> That's correct. Baba's mind emissions are microvita, and we're looking for evidence of, of microvita in, in a scientific laboratory uh, experiment done in a careful scientific way. And I'm optimistic that some experiment like that will, will either show the production of, of protozoa or they'll show the production of viruses because viruses are what are produced by microvita first and maybe those viruses create the first cells. So, but we, we, need, um, we need the kinds of, microbiologists who could carry out these kind of experiments and analyze the results uh, in, a, in a very careful way that could be published in a scientific journal, that more people could repeat the experiment, and a whole science of microvita could be developed based on positive results from um, these kind of proposed microvita experiments. That's, that's how I, that's what I've that's the best I could come up with so far of how to do experiments that scientifically could support the existence of microvita and indirectly would support the existence of cosmic mind, which means cosmic consciousness. Our whole, the whole spiritual philosophy is that consciousness is primary and matter and mind all derive from pure consciousness. But, but that pure consciousness cannot be put in a test tube but radioactivity is fairly well understood, except it, it needs to be revised. If, if billions of microvita make carbon atoms, then, then science has to also, physics has to also undergo a revolutionary change. Because right now, there may be 50 you know, different kinds of physical particles, like uh, protons and electrons and neutrinos and quarks, but uh, all of those would be made of microvita if, if the concept of microvita is correct. So physicists will have to go deeper into their, their own science in order for, uh, to, to find out if the microvita theory is correct. And it's really a, hypo, hypo, it's a hypothesis until it can be demonstrated in a laboratory. From a scientific point of view, microvita is a scientific hypothesis that has to be you know, put in a, you know, a way that can be tested you know, method, methodically, scientifically. One comment, currently science is, is uh, dominated by what's called a naturalism, which doesn't accept any supernatural explanations for natural phenomena, okay? And so far, science has gone pretty far without using uh, supernatural entities to explain the results of the science. But microvita are said to be derived from a cosmic mind, and if microvita can be established as existing, that implies that the cosmic mind also must exist if it produced the microvita. And does that mean that the cosmic mind is also natural or supernatural? Well, according to the spiritual philosophy of yoga, even the cosmic mind is natural because what's, what is supernatural is the supreme consciousness, which is infinite, and its infinite creative power. And the, the style of operation of the creative power of consciousness, that style of operation is called nature. So according to spiritual philosophy of, of yoga, nature is not a power. Nature is a style of 
operation of the creative power of cosmic consciousness. And, and if that's not accepted as a possible explanation, you know, if, if science may be blocked because if, if microvita are real, and that means the cosmic mind is, is real, that means the cosmic mind has to be accepted as a possible explanation for scientific results, which means the naturalism means to, means, needs to be expanded to include the, the cosmic mind itself as natural. And only the su infinite supreme consciousness and its creative power are supernatural. They, they're what create nature. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much to you. And, and thank you, Didi, for, for being the, the host of this um, program. And I hope people will, will follow up and, and learn more about Microvita and see what they can, how they can participate. It directly or indirectly, everyone's welcome. Thank you. Thank you to you. Um, I will post this video uh, in YouTube and WhatsApp, and I will also encourage people to, to write questions. And if they do, I will send them to you, okay? Thank you, yes. Thank you.